Good morning to you all. Today is Sunday, the resurrection day. Risen Lord Jesus Christ, we gather today to celebrate, we gather to share in the joy of your resurrection. The stone has been rolled away, death has been defeated. You have overcome all the powers of darkness. May we know your risen presence with us today. Today, we see Jesus, our risen Lord. Let the whole church say hallelujah. Lord, open our eyes to recognize him. Whatever cares of our world seek to hide from our view. Lord, we come to you this morning with our open eyes, as we ask you to fill them with a delight and rejoicing. Amen. Let us do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, our Lord be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and evermore. Amen. Now, I will ask Margaret Russell to come and read the Bible from the book of John, chapter 20. This is one to nine. Okay, come. Easter Sunday. Happy Easter, everyone. What a wonderful day. Let us hear from the gospel this morning from the book of John, uh, chapter 20, and beginning at verse one. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there and the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed they still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, when we fail to recognize you as our savior, forgive us. Forgive us, Father, when we have failed to acknowledge you as our risen Lord. When we have doubted that you are with us. Father, forgive us when we have not shared your good news. When we have been too concerned with ourselves. When we have not shared the joy of knowing you with others. Father, forgive us when we have failed to bring hope to the hopeless. When we fail to bring joy to the joyless. When we fail to offer your grace to those who are hurt. Father, forgive us. Lord, sometimes our lives seem to be almost as empty as your tomb. Perhaps only with the folded grave clothes to remind us that you are, you were once there. But we know that really. You are all around us. You appear in our lives in many guesses. And we ask forgiveness for all the times. 
We have not understood that. Open our eyes to your wonderful resurrection presence. Be with us, Lord. Amen. I know that there are some people who might not be feeling well, who might be in difficult situations, now is the time for me to pray for those people. Father, I pray for some of our church members who are not feeling well right now. Some of them who might be even on their deathbed. But I pray that you are God. We pray for those people who are in residential homes, who are in hospitals. We pray for those people who are isolated because of the coronavirus. We pray for those people, Father, who are unable maybe even to hear this message because of their ill health. But Father, I just pray that you are God. You are a caring Lord. You are a caring Father. You must understand that you are with us even when we are in those difficult situations. We pray for your love. We pray for your guidance. We pray for your protection. Be with everyone, Father. May you open their ears so that they are able to hear the word of God speaking life to them. Thank you, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Uh, this morning, I've decided to share with you from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 9. And I've come up with a theme why I believe in the resurrection. Why I believe in the resurrection. I say to you this morning, Christ is risen. I'm convinced. I say that Christ was dead and he was buried. That I believe. But these two I accept as true. He rose from the dead and he will come again in glory. And that is true. This Easter and to come before you on this day to proclaim this way, I cannot begin to tell you how this defines all that I am. But you will say to me, how do you know that the resurrection is real? How do you know that it is real, valid? Those are some questions you may pose to me. First, I would say that I believe in the resurrection because somebody told me about it. Well, some would immediately reply that Satan isn't very reliable. Well, it may not be, but the truth of the matter is that most of what we know is simply because somebody told us about it. Isn't it? How do you know that Christopher Columbus discovered America on 6 August 1492? Were you there? How do you know that the Victoria Falls in Central Africa were discovered by David Livingstone in November 1855? Were you there? No, you were not there. But there were people there who witnessed and wrote about it, and that is how we know about that. How do you know personally that a man has walked on the moon? Were you standing there to meet him when he stepped off? Well, you say, I know it because I saw it on TV. There are people to this day who insist that it was all done in fact. TV, studio, maybe down in Hollywood, in Hollywood. Many of them would insist that the International Space Station is all a hoax. It's because they don't want to believe. 
That may sound absurd, but the truth of the matter is I cannot prove it or disapprove it either way or neither. Can you? In the end, I guess I would have to say I do believe that a man has walked on the moon simply because a lot of people have told me about it. We have for more historical proof of the resurrection than we do thousand pieces of information that we routinely accept as fact every single day. If we are going to take a stand on something, then why not the historic testimony of countless persons throughout the ages who have declared the validity of the resurrection that he was resurrected. When Mary Magdalene, when Mary went to the tomb on that first Easter morning, she did so with a heavy heart. Your master, your teacher, your friend, it passed away. All of life was now in doubt. She stood at the entrance to the tomb weeping. And then she meets the gardener. And then the gardener calls her by name. Mary, she says. Can you imagine the look in her eyes and the turns and looks into his? Do you remember what she said? The joy of that first Easter can be found in her own response. Rabon, she yelled, teacher. And from what John tells us, she must have leaped into his arms. Jesus tells her not to hold on to him yet. You can see that. Who else saw the reason Jesus? A list of post-resurrection appearance are many in the Bible. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom. Who saw the reason Jesus Christ? Jesus appeared to Mary and Salome in Matthew 28 verse 9 to 10. Records Jesus appearing to the other Mary and Salome. On Mark 16 verse 1, on the Sunday morning of the resurrection, we hear about it. Jesus appeared for the third time to Simon Peter. Luke 24 verse 34 notes Jesus appearing to Peter on the Sunday of his resurrection. It is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Jesus appeared to two of his disciples when walking on the road to Emmaus. In Luke chapter 24 verse 13 to 32. Two followers of Jesus are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. On the Sabbath, Jesus appears though they do not recognize him until the end of the account. One disciple is named Clopas. Why the second disciples is unnamed. Jesus' fifth appearance to the 11 apostles is recorded in John 20, verse 26 to 30. In a later week, uh, Jesus appeared to, at their home in Jerusalem. This is likely to refer to this next Sunday. Thomas also believes and no longer doubts because he has seen Jesus. Appearances of Jesus are so many. You will hear that, uh, according to Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6, Paul knows Jesus appeared to 500 people who saw the risen Jesus at one time. So he also knows most of these people were still alive when he wrote to the Corinthians believers about 20 years later. Jesus appeared to the 11 apostles in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 9, records the ascension of Jesus 40 days after the resurrection. So this would have been 10 days before Pentecost. So you can see that at least... 513 people saw Jesus alive at his death and resurrection. In any courtroom, this number of witnesses would be far more than needed to establish the accuracy of an event. Further, many of these eyewitnesses suffered and died for their belief that Jesus had risen from the dead. They were persecuted for saying that. How would people die for what they did not see? How would people die for what they did not believe? The overwhelming evidence points to Jesus literally returning to life on the third day after his death, appearing to many people and ascending to heaven 40 days later. Now I want you to listen to this next thing Jesus tells Mary. It is the job description for the church. He tells her, go to my brothers and tell them, my friends, I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ because someone told me about it. Someone told me. Undoubtedly, 
There are people who are bothered by the fact that they cannot prove that Mary told the disciples. I have seen the Lord. She spoke the truth. I will grant you. It cannot be proven. But the truth is that you will never have more proof than the testimony of the first century witnesses. There are no photographs. There were no videos. But they've seen it. They will manage to say it. So the resurrection cannot be proven. Nor can it be disapproved. And that is why there are many brilliant people who believe and many brilliant people who do not believe. Because it can't be proven either way. What we know of it is simply what people have told us about it. And what we have heard through the Bible. Same faiths, new faiths and fashions emerge. This is acceptable business encouraged by the music industry. The industry philosophy is you are only as good as your last hit record. Songs come and go fast, barely have time to learn them, but you take that song, Amazing Grace. Now there's a song that has stood the test of time. Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. John Newton, that infamous British slave trader, was converted by John Wesley, subsequently renounced his slave trading and wrote his great hymn, Amazing Grace. How sweet that sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Your great grandparents sang that song. And long after you and I are gone, people will still be singing that song. Why? Is the real thing, and it has stood the test of time. It is the real thing. I believe. The resurrection is genuine because it has stood the test of time. It was not something that was here today and gone tomorrow. As long as there is life on earth, there will be people talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Third, I believe in the resurrection because I've experienced it. The first century disciples did not believe in the resurrection because they could explain it. They believed in the resurrection because they'd experienced it. One whom they had known in the flesh and whom they had seen die was now alive with them. That's how they have seen it. So the best proof of the resurrection is not in what the witnesses say that they saw, but in how they responded to what they saw. A frightened band of disciples huddled together in a house with a door by. That is the scene before resurrection. A powerful band of might witness thrust out in the world. That's a sin post-resurrection. It has been estimated that by the end of the first century, over half a million people had come under the Christian banner. That is the power of resurrection. It is never easy to disregard the testimony, witness of who ready to die for their words. Eventually, of course, every one of the disciples met a violent death. People may lie to perpetuate a myth, I will grant you that. But people are not going to die to perpetuate what they know to be a myth. They cannot die for that. Maybe one, maybe even two or three, but not all twelve. They were not men who had a death wish. They knew what they had seen. They believed it in so passionately that they were willing to put their lives on the line in their efforts to tell the story to others. They were resurrection people. And that's what it is. The apostle, Paul wrote, I have died to sin and I have been raised with him. This is what I am talking about. The resurrection is an historical event, but it must become more than that to us. It is quite apart from the battle of Waterloo, a man's landing on the moon. The resurrection is an ongoing event, an event shared by every generation. More than that, it is an event we are invited to participate in. We are to become resurrection people. It will be then that we each echo the words of Paul to the Philippians. All I care to know is Christ and the power of his resurrection. Isn't that great? Great words for us to know. You recall the saying, the only difference between a grave and a rat is the dimensions. It is a false key way of saying the resurrection is not just for the afterlife. It is also for this life here and now. Don't get in a rut and miss the impact of the resurrection. 
It is power for the living of these days. It is power for the living of these days. My friends, we can sing the great hymns of Easter. We can hear again the familiar stories of scripture. We can enjoy the lilies and we can join on the hallelujah chorus. Easter can be experienced in these days. It can be experienced. Yes. But the real power of Easter is the way that people live. Slides are moved from death to life. From sealed tomb to open doorway. From desperate to hope. From the old ways to new opportunities. That is Easter. That is resurrection. That is the hope we are asked to, talking about. I believe in the resurrection because I have seen the God of resurrection at work. I have seen the resurrection Christ raise people from the dead of despair to the joy of new life. That's Easter. The reason Lord comes back to life I, I, and assure the disciples that they are forgiven. Peter had denied his Lord three times. Thomas had doubted. All the disciples had for, forsaken him. But Christ came back, forgave them, resurrected them. He came back to share with them. He, came back, he comes today, this morning, to share with you the joy, the encouragement, and the forgiveness of Easter. Isn't that great? Consequently, if doubts about Jesus Christ's resurrection, if doubts about God come your way, or if you are feeling apathetic, not as excited about Jesus Christ, faith today or tomorrow, then chances are that you are a bit like Mary Magdalene, Peter, and that other disciples of the first Easter. Chances are you have only been hearing the stories about the resurrection. You have not been in the presence of the risen Lord enough. Or if you do worship regularly, but it still feels the doubts, the uncertainties, the lack of enthusiasm that have been describing, then you have not been paying at enough attention to your meetings with the risen Lord. Perhaps you have not been the right man, you have not had the right mental attitude for worship. You need to have that right mental attitude for you to understand the reason, Lord, to experience him. Let me tell you, when you live in the presence of Jesus every Sunday, when you do not just attend, but hang on in every way, when you commune regularly, pray at home, daily reading, read your Bible, involve yourself in the study of the Bible, get active in church programs, you see that Christ lives. When you live with Jesus every day, then your doubts, confusion, apathy cannot help you, but begin to take care of themselves. Then you realize that you possess all the evidence you will ever need to convince you of the truth of the resurrection. Then you'll be sure that God exists. You will see him everywhere. Then faith will truly matter to you. God has provided, he's still doing it. Enough to convince us all the truth of Christianity and of his son's resurrection. Enough to get you excited about your faith. It is merely a matter of living with the risen Lord, a matter of living with Jesus that will help you to understand. He is here every Sunday. He is present in your Bible. He is present in your home. It is merely a matter of listening, of reading, of praying and serving. What else do you want? He is risen. Believe it. He's present among us. Just come and open your eyes. Christ is risen. All that is destructive and painful in your life, life is dead. In every facet of your life, you have been given a fresh start with Christ. Christ is risen indeed. He's risen for you and me. Don't worry. Be happy in Christ. Don't worry about the coronavirus. God is in control. The reason Lord is in control is in charge of what is happening. Put your faith in him. Leave your worries in him. And you will take control, charge of your life. Let us surrender our lives to Christ. As we, human beings, we know we are hopeless without Christ. But if we surrender our lives in Christ, he is able to help us. He is the Alpha and Omega. He has won it. Victory is on his side. He has conquered death. He has money to conquer death. If someone has money to conquer death, we need to put our faith in him. And that is the only person is Jesus Christ. He knows what lays ahead of us. We should not be worried about what comes tomorrow because we believe in the one who holds tomorrow. And that is Jesus Christ. So the future is in his hands. It's not in our hands. It's in Jesus' hands because he knows it. 
So I'm saying to you this morning, please, don't worry. Be happy. Be in Jesus. For his reason. And he cares for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray as we are thanking Jesus for what has happened already. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Risen Lord Jesus, we adore you, we praise your name. Today you defeated death and rose again. You died on the cross that we might be free. Thank you, risen Lord, that you did this for us so that we might enjoy the freedom of eternal life. Risen Lord Jesus Christ, we love you. We worship you. We adore you. Be with us, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me share you with the grace. Take with you the joy of the risen Lord and share the good news with all those you meet. Lord, merit the privilege of knowing you on this earth. You loved her. She loved you. I am your brother. I am your sister. And you love me and I love you. Help me to share this wonderful news with those around me as we celebrate the resurrection. I thank you so much for all that you have done for me. May the good Lord bless you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a happy Easter. Christ is risen. Have a cup of coffee. Please don't forget to put your offerings aside. Either right now through online giving or through other means. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.